For 18 years, Tim Friede spent much of his spare time like this. Black Mamba. Taking bites from his pets, some of the deadliest snakes on the planet. <sighs> so why face something even the bravest action heroes usually fear? I hate snakes, suck! The reason behind it is I didn't want to die from snake bite. I didn't want to use antivenom. I didn't want to lose a finger. Despite lacking a formal scientific education, Freedy developed a system to build up resistance, starting with small injections of venom and building up to full-on bites. Very painful. But there were setbacks. Well, the first year I started doing this, it was a total disaster. I ended up in the hospital in a coma on 9-12, the day after 9-11, after two cobra bites. Eventually, Freedy had the idea that his blood could be used by scientists to develop a better kind of antivenom and tackle a global problem. Five million people are bitten every year, 125,000 people die every year, and there's over 400,000 amputations and disfigurements because of snake venom. While there are antivenoms available for many of the world's venomous snakes, the traditional process has drawbacks. Small doses of venom are injected into an animal, like a horse, which then produces antibodies turned into an antivenom. Plus, those horse antibodies can cause serious side effects. That means a patient needs to identify the kind of snake that bit them, and then the hospital needs to have that specific antivenom, a challenge in many poor rural areas. Freedy's dream, a universal antivenom based on human antibodies. It seemed more like a fantasy. For nearly two decades, he couldn't convince scientists to use his blood, but he persisted. Over 650 injections and over 200 snake bites later, one phone call changed everything. I was like, look, I would love to get my hands on some of your blood. And then his answer to me was, yeah, I've been expecting this call for a long time. Immunologist Jacob Glanville founded biotech company Cenevax. The goal? Create a universal vaccine that could treat multiple infectious diseases. I started wondering whether the same biology might apply to snake bite that applies to universal vaccines. And the opportunity to study Tim Freedy was once in a lifetime. Tim seems to be a totally unique immunological history phenomenon. Glanville says that through repeated venom exposure, Freedy has built incredibly strong antibodies. So it's like a, a samurai sword. You're bending it and hammering it and bending it and hammering. Each time it makes the blade more excellent. Now, a collaboration between Freedy, Centivax, and scientists at Columbia University have published a new research paper. The team developed what it calls an antivenom cocktail using antibodies isolated from Freedy's blood. In tests on mice, it gave complete protection against 13 out of 19 of the most deadly snake venoms in the world and partial protection against the other six. A major step forward, but still a long journey ahead with a different blend of antibodies for vipers in the works. Freedy hasn't been bitten in eight years, but says he's always willing to jump back in the snake pit for science. I miss it a lot, but we'll see what the future holds. A citizen scientist just waiting for the right mission to sink his fangs in. Did you have to end on that last <laughs> picture of the snake? Just, I mean, that, I'm not telling, I'm not kidding you, Marissa. Snakes are literally one of my biggest fears. I mean, they, they I'm make sorry to my hear that. skin crawl. I cannot even handle them. Anyways, okay, not about me. Um, let's talk about um, let's talk about that story because um, I understand that all those snake bites they not only took a toll on Tim physically, but they also affected his family life. Yeah, talk about taking one for the team, Yasmin, and not just one, but like 200 for the team. And this had a really big impact because he was married, he had kids, and his wife was sick and tired of watching him put himself through this. But also, she was, of course, also potentially worried about the impact it would have on herself and the kids. So she moved all of them out. He was left alone. He didn't talk to his son for a long time, his wow. sons. But one of them saw the news, called him up and said, Dad, I finally understand, and I'm proud of you after all that you've done. So wow. uh, hopefully we'll see this if all goes well on the shelves for humans within the next several years, Yasmin. We thank you for watching and remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.